2021 was a painful year for French tennis. For the first time since 1968, when the professional era began, no French players, men nor women, reached the third round of Roland Garros. For one of tennis's richest nations, this was an embarrassing episode. It punctuates the end of a so-called golden generation that has failed to land the sport's biggest accolades. While Joe Wilfried Songa, Gael Monfils, Richard Gasquet and Gilles Simon represented fresh hope for the men's game and have all enjoyed stellar top 10 careers as well as delivering a Davis Cup win, none have won a Grand Slam singles title. Yannick Noah's French Open win in 1983 remains the only major victory for a Frenchman in the Open era. There have been more triumphs in the women's game, with five singles majors shared between Mary Pierce, Amélie Moresmo and Marianne Bartoli. That there have only been two French Open singles champions from France in the past 54 years will be a source of disappointment for a proud tennis nation whose rich history boasts the likes of Suzanne Longlin and the Four Musketeers. And the recent decline has been stark. At the end of March 2022, there were just two French players inside the top 40 of the men's and women's singles rankings, both of whom are comfortably in their 30s. Rewind 10 years, there were five in the top 20 alone, all in their mid-20s. 2022 will be the year where the golden generation all compete at Roland Garros for the final time, with Songa confirming he will retire at the tournament's end. But what next for French tennis? And why has this golden generation failed to deliver despite so much promise? Tonga, an Australian Open finalist who peaked at world number five, believes the narrative that he and his fellow Frenchmen have failed is unfair given the quality of opposition, namely Roger Federer, Rafael Nadal and Novak Djokovic. All of us won almost 500 matches, said Tonga. But in France, we always have been treated like the guys who lose because of these three guys who won everything. However, others, such as Serena Williams' coach Patrick Muratoglu, have questioned whether his countrymen are wired to win major titles. Things are too easy for them, Muratoglu told CNN in 2014. They make a lot of money in tennis quite early, and I think we lack ambition. Grand Slam winners are people who have very high expectations, who simply have the mentality of champions. I'm not sure too many French players have that mentality. There has been a stereotype leveled against French players. Great entertainers rather than great champions. Andy Murray has previously suggested there is some truth to that. They have all got a lot of flair, he said in 2013. They can normally play some drop shots, slice and are good athletes, but they can make mistakes. Because I play solid all of the time against them, that's why my game has matched up pretty well. It's arguably no surprise that this generation of French players have maverick tendencies. Noah, idol to a young Monfils, once outlined his philosophy. In tennis, as in life, everyone should go to the net. Take risks, like the three musketeers, attack and live dangerously. There are curious and wild theories about French singles players' shortcomings. Perhaps most peculiarly, Federer has been accused of being at the heart of the system malfunctioning. For decades, it has been believed that only Federer's should be trained, Gilles Simon said. And he, with his style of play, his way of going forward, the confidence he exudes, came to validate these choices. He made us lose 20 years. In France, everyone wants Roger Federer. Parents, coaches. We don't realize that Rafael Nadal has won so many grand slams by doing something quite different. While the French tennis system has long been, and in many regards still is, the envy of many nations, others are starting to taste more success. In Italy, for example, there's been a big shift towards a high concentration of challenger-level tournaments, giving younger Italian players more opportunities to test themselves against seasoned pros on home soil at a lower cost. In the first half of 2022, Italy will host 17 challenger tournaments, compared to France's 10. You don't have to travel too much, said Matteo Berrettini of Italy's approach. You can bring your physio, trainer, coach. I got a lot of wildcards, which was helping not just to earn points, but to earn experience. The French Tennis Federation, FFT, is hoping Louis Bofiga, a significant figure in Canada's remarkable rise to become a powerhouse nation, can also help turn their fate around. Bofiga told tennis majors, When I arrived in Canada, they were content with little, but we managed to change this state of mind by saying that no, 
there was no reason why they couldn't do it. In France, we have to banish this rumour that the French are mentally weak. This is not true. Despite the doom and gloom, of the 30 top-ranked men and women under the age of 20 in world tennis, five of them are French, a higher number than any other nation. Gasquet, a two-time Wimbledon semi-finalist, believes his generation must provide support to help them reach their full potential. There are some very good players behind. We have to try to push them. We know that this is a difficult time for everyone. We have to try to help everyone so that there is a good generation that is coming up in French tennis. While there are glimpses of hope in the future, Monfils, now 35, is still convinced he can deliver a much-coveted major title for the golden generation. All the time in my career, I never made the good decision, he said at the Australian Open. I'm fine with that, but I believe I can click once. Before I finish, I believe that once I will do it.